Hello, welcome to the Text for Baby Data Access and Outreach Partner Data Portal Training, which will provide an overview of how to access the participant level data in our portal and how to analyze the data. Here's today's agenda. First, I'll go over the goal for providing data access to our outreach partners and review how to obtain access to the portal through a data use agreement if you haven't already done so. Then I'll do a walkthrough demonstration of the actual text for baby data portal and share the associated data definitions that you'll need to appropriately analyze the data. Next, I'll introduce the data analysis toolkit, which includes some common questions you might ask of the data and then how to use the portal to find answers to those questions. And lastly, I'll share analysis examples that our partners have conducted in the past to get a better understanding of enrollment in their state and to help promote their enrollment strategies. So the goals of this session are really threefold. First, we want to encourage all partners to analyze data specific to their own community, particularly for high-risk areas. Second, the portal provides data that is updated daily and allows you to track if your campaigns or initiatives are effective by looking at enrollment numbers over time. And then third, the portal gives you the opportunity to respond to this timely data and make changes to and enhance your enrollment efforts based on the feedback that you receive. The process for gaining portal access, if you haven't already done so, is outlined here. A data use agreement can be provided by your state's outreach representative, um, which we'll have a list of at the end of this presentation, or you can contact Jessica Bouchard and she will send you a copy. Once you've gotten the data use agreement, um, just fill out the information, sign, and return it to Jessica, whose information is on the screen. If you don't hear anything back within two weeks, please do contact us um, and check in. Um, but you should receive your credentials to access the data portal within a few days. Uh, one thing to note is the data that we provide access to is really so that you can track your enrollments and progress, but it's not necessarily to carry out formal research. Our data is really designed to support you in your outreach initiatives, and it's not intended for formal evaluation of the program. So if you are interested in conducting formal research, please contact Jessica Bouchard separately. Next, we'll move on to our data portal demonstration. When you first access the portal URL, whose name is at the top of the screen there, you will be presented with username and password fields. So you just want to enter the credentials that Text for Baby sent to you and click login. When you first log into the portal, you'll be taken to the national dashboard, which shows national level trends in our data. At the top there, you can see some higher level stats, such as number of new users who have enrolled in the past day or week, um, as well as number of messages that have been sent in that time. On the left hand side, you have a fast facts bar. Um, the first number there is the total number of participants who have ever enrolled in Text for Baby since our launch in February of 2010, um, as well as the number of messages that have been sent. And and then below that, we have the answers to four feedback questions that are included in Text for Baby. Um, the four feedback questions show the average responses for all people who have received the question. Um, so for example, one is the average satisfaction rating for all users who responded to a survey question asking to rate their satisfaction on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best. And on this screen you can see that it is displaying a total average of 7.67. And if you scroll down a bit, you'll see a series of colorful bar charts that show the makeup and some demographics of our participant population. For example, the third chart down there shows among all Text for Baby enrollees, the proportion of participants who signed up to receive English language messages versus the proportion who signed up to receive Spanish language messages. Um, and you can also see the proportion of pregnant enrollees by which trimester they enrolled in and a couple other examples. Next to the right, you'll see a few blue bar charts um, that show state level data, such as the number of text for babies, text for baby enrollees in each state to date, um, as well as a ranking of text for baby users by estimated pregnancies and live births per state. And then also the total number of text for baby mobile app users by state. Um, so these charts are really great because you can actually export the state level data into Excel by clicking on the export button in the lower left hand corner of that box. 
Now to access the actual data sets, you'll want to scroll back up to the top of the page and click the second tab from the left next to the National Dashboard tab, which is called T4B Dashboard Outreach Partner. Now you should be able to see the four data sets that you have access to on the left hand side there. The first data set called Outreach Partner Participants View will be on view and this first data set will likely be the most useful for you because it shows the number of users who have enrolled in your state since launch, launch of the service. This data set also includes information that we capture during a participant's first registration in the program, such as their message language or their location. So this data can be used to track spikes in enrollment uh, or to look at zip code or county level data for your state. One thing you want to note is that on the bottom left hand corner of this page, you'll see the total number of records that the data set is displaying, um, but this will change if you do filter the data, which I'll discuss in a moment. There are two main features that will assist you in analyzing the data. The first one is the filter feature, and this allows you to select data by certain characteristics, such as by date, um, say a month or week of interest, or maybe by type of user. And this can be accessed by clicking the filters button in the upper left hand. So for example, if you want to look at data for a particular week, you would hover over the filters buttons and click on date range. Um, and then you would select the type of dates you're interested in, be it date of registration or maybe a date of unsubscription. And then a start and end date range field will pop up so that you can enter the date parameters using a little pop-up calendar. And once you have the date selected, you want to click add date range on the right hand side. And then lastly, click the refresh button, which is right next to the filter button to ensure that your data updates. Once you've done that, you can double check that your data has actually updated by looking at the number of total records that I mentioned earlier, which is displayed in the lower left hand part of the screen. You can also filter by non-date parameters uh, by selecting the quick option from the filters drop down menu. And using this, you can filter by characteristics such as type of user, by county, or um, even by message language type. The second feature we offer is the export feature, which allows you to pull the data out of the portal and onto your computer where it might be a little bit easier to work with. Um, to do this, once you've filtered the data um, to what you'd like, click the export button, which is located right next to the refresh button. And it will allow you to enter a file name and also a type of file um, that you want to export it as. You can choose either Excel or a Word document or PDF. Um, I usually choose an Excel file because I personally find that's easiest to work with, but it's up to you. Um, and then the last option there, pages to export. That will select current page as the default, but you want to make sure to change that selection to all pages so that you don't just get the first 10 records that are displayed on the first page if there are more than that. So once you've selected all pages, then you should be done and you can click the export button, um, which should initiate the download of the data onto your computer. And after a few minutes, a file should pop up. The second data set you have access to, Participants View by Referral URL, which is now highlighted on the left there, allows you to track all enrollments since July of 2011 that originated from a specific website. So this data set is really designed for our partners who have a Text for Baby enrollment link on their website. So for example, if you were to put one of our web enrollment buttons on your website um, that actually links participants to a sign up page for Text for Baby, you would be able to track enrollees who use that here um, using the referral URL column on the right. So that site of origin is identifiable through the latter part of the referring URL um, right after text for baby's name, which is chosen by the partner to reference the website. And note that this data set is at the national level, so it will show all states. And if you want to just look at web, excuse me, web enrollees from your state, you'll need to apply a filter to do that. The third data set is called the Referral Survey data set, and it comprises of data that collection started for in February of 2012, which was actually after our initial launch in 2010. Uh, this data set captures participant response to a referral survey question that we ask all of our participants 14 days after they enroll. Um, and that question is, how did you hear about Text for Baby? 
So this data might be helpful if you're using a particular referral strategy and you want to see how effective it is um, or maybe you want to know how folks are finding out about Text for Baby in your specific state. Um, for example, you could compare data by week to see if there are differences in enrollment after implementing a new enrollment promotion strategy or campaign. Um, under referral source, you'll see a few different options um, that can be listed, but if it is blank, that is just because the person did not provide an answer to the question. And one thing to note is that we are back to being at the state level with this data set. So it will only show participant responses for your state. The fourth data set that you have access to is the app usage data set. And this contains data on our mobile app that launched in November of 2014. So it's used to track anyone who has ever logged into the app and also their engagement with the app, such as date of first login, um, date of most recent login, that type of thing. Um, this data set is back to being on a national level. So this is everyone who has ever enrolled in the app across the nation, so keep that in mind. Um, and then the last thing that I want to share with you is um, the charts view which is outside of the data sets um, and it's the third tab from the left on the top called charts view and this is really interesting to look at for reference um, but the data sets are probably going to be most useful for you for your analysis um, this tab just has a few different charts in it that display national enrollment trends for text for baby uh, similar to what you saw on the national dashboard Next, let's take a look at the data definitions so you can actually understand all of the different types of data that you'll be seeing on the portal and be able to use it more effectively when you go to analyze it. There are two types of data that we collect in the portal. The first is static data, meaning that it doesn't change over time, and this is captured when a user first registers for a program. This would be something like their date of registration, their channel of registration, or their zip code. All of those data points are going to stay the same no matter what. The second type of data that we collect reflects the, most, the user's most recent interaction with the service. So an example of that would be subscription status. Um, if a user is enrolled and then decide they want to unsubscribe by texting the word stop to our short code, um, one day their subscription status would be listed as on and the next day it would change to be listed as off. The first data definition I'll explain is for user. A user is anyone who has completed registration using a unique phone number. However, the actual phone number isn't displayed in the portal. Instead, we have assigned randomized numbers uh, to each of the participants, and those are listed as participant identifiers. One thing to note um, is if the same phone number registers twice, for example, if someone signs up, cancels, and then signs up again, we still treat that as one participant. So um, static information such as the date of registration will remain the same for that participant identifier. Protocol. The protocol represents the type of messages that a user is receiving. When participants sign up for the program, they have to enter either a due date or a birth date into the Text for Baby system. And this date determines if they're going to receive new mom or pregnancy messaging. Keep in mind that if a user unsubscribes, the value that's displayed for protocol will reflect their messaging type at the time they canceled the service. So if someone cancels when they are pregnant, um, their protocol will show as pregnancy messaging. The subscription status indicates whether a participant is eligible to be receiving text for baby messaging. So if they have signed up for the service and are still enrolled, their subscription status will display as on. Um, however, if they decide they want to cancel the service and have, say, texted in the word stop, they will, not, they will stop receiving all messaging and their subscription status will be changed to off. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, with our non-static data, this value can change uh, over time in the data set. Currently receiving protocol messages. This point shows whether or not a user is currently receiving the pregnancy or new mom protocol messages. Um, the values can be yes or no, and it's based on how long the user has been in the program. Um, so if the value is yes, it means that the user is currently receiving uh, those three times a week 
pregnancy or new mom protocol messages um, and the ad hoc alert messages. Um, however, if the user has a baby who is over the age of one, um, based on their most recent date of birth, um, then the value is switched to no under currently receiving protocol messages um, because they have, in essence, aged out of our program. Language is fairly straightforward. Our values are English and Spanish, the languages that we provide our messages in. Um, and this is determined uh, by the user when they first enroll. If they send the keyword baby uh, to our short code, they will start receiving messages in English. However, if they text in the word bebe to our, the same short code, they will start receiving messages in Spanish. Type. We have five different type identifiers, pregnant, new mom, dad or parent, relative or friend, and healthcare provider or observer. Uh, this question asking about type of user was actually implemented after our initial launch in February of 2010. Um, it was started among those users who registered on or after February 29th of 2012. And then in August of 2012, we also asked users who had registered before February 29th um, to provide their user type. We asked them retroactively. Um, so if this type is blank, it's because either a user wasn't currently subscribed when we sent out that question, um, that ad hoc question in August of 2012, or it's because they didn't respond to the question um, asking about type. The current type of user for pregnant and new mom is actually based on a combination of responses to that question about type of user, um, but also based on the most recent due date or birth date that is captured by text for baby um, for those who report that they're either pregnant or new mom at registration. Um, so those values, pregnant and new mom, uh, reflect what the user currently is, whereas the uh, current the type of text for baby user represented by um, the latter options like dad parent, um, that's going to show data that isn't updated and that has been the same since enrollment. Um, the R type data element is currently in the process of being updated to reflect type at registration for all participants, including uh, for pregnant women and new moms. Um, but until then, this data element can be used to filter out participants that are not pregnant or new mothers, um, or to look at current type for pregnant and new mother users rather than type at registration. Next is channel of registration. There are four different ways that a user can enroll in text for baby The first is SMS, meaning that a user enrolled via text by sending baby to the 511411 shortcode. The second option is to enroll via our mobile app. Um, anyone who downloads and signs up for our mobile app automatically enrolls in our text messaging service. So if they enroll that way, uh, the value will display as app. The third option is called backend. Um, text for Baby actually has a number of health plans and agencies that we partner with to message their participants with an option to opt into the Text for Baby service. So those participants who have backend listed um, as their channel of enrollment were enrolled in association with one of our health plan or agency partners. And then lastly, um, the fourth option is web, and that is displayed for any users who enroll via our website or through um, a link or participant enrollment button on another partner's website. Registration date displays the month, day, and year um, along with an actual timestamp for when a participant first enrolled in Text for Baby and this date is provided in Eastern Standard Time. Zip code. When a user first enrolls in the Text for Baby program, uh, they all enter a five-digit zip code. Um, it has to be entered as a five-digit format for a user to be able to complete their registration. Um, this is a numeric value. Um, and one thing that I've noticed, um, sometimes when exporting into Excel, Excel will actually drop the leading or ending zeros from zip codes if the column in Excel isn't formatted correctly. So if you see any zip codes that are less than five digits, um, you just want to double check that and make sure that your cells are formatted correctly um, because that shouldn't be happening. 
Next, we have referring URL, which as I mentioned, captures users who enrolled in Text for Baby using a web link. The possible values for this field are bulleted out on the slide. So options are people who click directly on the Text for Baby website, those who registered via a Text for Baby mobile page, say from a phone, or participants who link to our sign up page from an outreach partner's website. Um, in the last example there, the latter part of the URL would indicate which website they came from as long as the partner uh, set up a website identifier when they first installed their link and enrollment button. The next data definition is referral source. Referral source captures how a participant heard about Text for Baby, uh, so that could be through their friend or family or maybe they heard about it um, through a radio broadcast. There are a few different options there. Um, we did update the options available to our users to select um, starting uh, in February of 2013. We added two additional response options that include magazine and Facebook or Twitter. So you just want to keep that in mind when you're analyzing uh, the data for a referral source. You might want to split the data based on um, the time period with our original options and uh, the time period that had those two additional options um, to make sure that your data is accurate. You will see some blanks when you're looking at the referral source data field, um, and that is just for participants who didn't respond to the survey. Um, so that is how it displays for those records. Submission date and protocol at time of submission. These are related to survey questions that we ask participants. So for example, the question we asked participants about how they heard about Text for Baby. Um, submission date is going to represent the date and time that the survey was answered by a user um, who provided a response. Or if the user did not provide a response to the survey question, then this field is gonna show the date and time that the survey was sent to the participant. Um, and this date value is uh, in the same month, day, and year format as the other dates. Protocol at time of submission captures the message protocol that a user was receiving when they responded to the survey question. Um, and the value options for this are pregnancy or new mom. So um, what type were they receiving new mom messaging or were they receiving pregnancy messaging when they either received or responded to the survey in question? Next are data definitions for our app usage data set. These definitions are related to app use and interaction. The first we have is number of logins, which captures the number of times a participant has logged into the app. Um, this definition did change on February 11th of 2016. Prior to that, users who entered their username and password information to access the app but didn't save it were not captured as unique logins. Participants who entered a username or passcode after February 11th of 2016, however, were captured as unique logins, regardless of whether or not their credentials were saved. So just keep that in mind. For a date of last login, we're seeing when a participant first logged into the app, which is a data element that will not change even if someone deletes the app and say reinstalls it. Next is date of last login and that shows when the participant most recently logged into the mobile app. And finally, we have number of days since last login, which captures the number of days between the participant's last login and the current date. Lastly, we have channel of SMS unsubscription. And this is anyone who unsubscribes from our text messaging service and how they do it. So there are three options for that. The first is SMS. Um, that's anyone who unsubscribes via text message, um, meaning that they texted in the word stop to our short code. The second option for channel of SMS unsubscription is mobile app. Um, there is an option in our mobile app to turn off SMS messaging. So if the participant chooses to do that, their unsubscription status will, sh I'm sorry, their un channel of unsubscription will show as mobile app. And then the last option there is BEP. Um, and that's kind of the counterpart to the back end value for how a person initially subscribed to Text for Baby. So health plans and agencies working with us um, have the ability to unenroll participants in a batch. And if they do that, then the participants channel of SMS unsubscription will be displayed as BEP. Up next is the data analysis toolkit. 
The data analysis toolkit was developed by Text for Baby based on the data needs that we were seeing from our outreach partners. So it was really designed to help you work through data analysis um, using our data portal. And it includes um, some different data analysis examples, ideas for potential evaluation, and step-by-step -step instructions to some of the most common data questions that our partners have had in the past. Um, so you can see at the bottom of the slide there, there's a link to our data analysis toolkit. So feel free to access it right there. The toolkit is organized by type of analysis questions. So for example, how can I find out the percentage of users who are currently enrolled and receiving messages? Or um, how can I decide which zip codes or counties I should target for outreach? So the toolkit will walk you through how to approach each of these questions step by step with screenshots. For the last part of our presentation today, we will review some really neat examples of ways that partners have used the portal to track data in the past um, and have really explored what the portal can do for them in terms of feedback um, for their promotional and outreach strategies. The first example we have is North Carolina. North Carolina partners implemented a series of public service announcements on television in 2013. Um, and they plotted um, information from their broadcasts at the top in blue there um, above their enrollment data. So those bright blue lines at the top there, each one represents a campaign and a station where their PSA was aired. And the length of the line uh, represents the duration of um, the time that PSA was aired. And then on the bottom there in the line graph, um, we have a representation of enrollees in North Carolina. Um, the purple line shows all of North Carolina's enrollment. The pink one shows um, counties in which the media markets were affected. Um, and the gray line shows other counties that weren't necessarily touched by the PSA ad campaigns. And you can see that there's a really nice correlation there um, when the enrollments begin to increase in July um, and they match right when the ads started. Um, so they, North Carolina was able to really use this data to assess the effectiveness of their strategy and um, they were able to see a really nice increase in enrollment. The next example is Idaho. Idaho did mailings to pregnant Medicaid recipients in their state and they tracked the number of enrollees, new enrollees they had after their mailings were sent um, and they did this three years in a row. And as you can see on this line chart, um, for each year, um, each year is represented by a different line, they had a sharp increase in the number of new enrollees right after they sent out their Medicaid mailing. Um, so they uh, saw an effective increase um, for that campaign and strategy. Ventura County in California did a really interesting analysis. Um, they were interested in figuring out which zip codes to target for their enrollment activities. So they actually looked at live births by zip code and cross-referenced that with the number of text for baby enrollees they had in those zip codes. Um, and by doing that, they were able to see the percent of total live births that they were kind of getting at with the program. Um, and they were able to pull out the zip codes that um, they wanted to target more strongly with their enrollment activities. In 2013, the Virginia Department of Health did a very similar analysis to Ventura County, um, except they decided to do a visual representation, which is really cool. Um, and they also cross-referenced the number of text for baby users that they had um, with birth rate data in different counties and zip codes. So you can see with the visual, then they were able to map which areas had uh, high text for baby participants and low birth rates, which areas had low text for baby participants and high birth rates, um, which were the areas that they wanted to then target um, with their enrollment activities. And the last example I'm going to share with you is an analysis done by our Arkansas partners. Um, they decided to put up text for baby billboards um, and they did this in campaigns over four years from 2010 to 2014. And each time they tracked um, the zip code in which the billboard was placed um, next to how many enrollees in text for baby they had. And then they looked at the percent increase um, in enrollment in those zip codes. So they were able to see percent increases um, 
in the counties with the zip codes that range from 14% enrollment increase all the way to 100% enrollment increase. That concludes the presentation for today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to shoot us an email. Um, you can contact Jessica. Her email is up on the screen there. Um, or you can also contact um, your outreach partner specialist. Um, just identify that person on this slide by which state they are in charge of. And uh, that person can help you with any information related to best practices and um, outreach or uh, you know what type of campaign you might want to try, what our other partners have done in the past. Um, so they're really wonderful resources. Please, please do ask them if you have questions. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much and um, best of luck with your data analysis.